Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and welcome back to another Office Hours. I believe this is the Office Hours all of you have been waiting for, where we take back the curtain and show you how all the, uh, you know, how how the meat, how the sausage is made, if you, so to speak. Uh, but thankfully, yet again, I'm not here doing it all by myself. We've got the whole Office Hours gang with us. What up, gang? What up, up crew? <laughs> <laughs> crew Ew. nice well uh happy tuesday uh apologies if anyone was sitting around waiting for us this morning uh things didn't work this morning so we didn't do one this morning that's how live stream mm -hmm. works sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and you just don't do it <laughs> uh but to make up for it uh i am gonna be going live this evening and doing another after hours uh mixing session inside of luna so if you've been following along on those at all or even if you haven't been following along and you just want to see what it looks like to actually be mixing a song inside of Luna, 100% in real time, no BS, just uh, exactly you know how the process is. You're going to want to tune in tonight at 5 p.m. PST. Uh, I'll be going live with that, and those are always a lot of fun because I get to do some real music work and get to uh, hang out with all of you guys, show you guys some tips and tricks, and then every once in a while I'll take some breaks and answer questions to, for you all. But I have one very, very important question for Levin Connor. What, uh, I, I, I heard a rumor that there's an update coming today. We, Connor and I should answer at the same time. Let's go. No, okay. Connor, Connor, tell the people what's happening. Well, the people, today we are happy to announce and release Luna 1.0.2. It is coming imminently. It's a bug fix release. We dropped it yesterday that we'd be coming out with that as soon as possible. Uh, and... Today it'll be available. Uh, it could be even going live just during the course of this particular office hour session. It's got fixes for the uh, modifier key issues on certain international keyboard layouts, uh, some optimizations to GPU usage that should decrease fan speed on some systems, yes. prevent the fans from spinning up like crazy, some other great bug fixes in there, a lot of which uh, are driven by the most reported items through feedback and submitted to other other uh, mechanics that we have for capturing issues in the field. So thanks for all your input on that. And that will be available uh, within the hour we expect, but certainly by the end of the day. So what's the what's the mechanism? How do, how do people get that update uh, going on their system? Yep, so if you're uh, in Luna, you should just click on the check for updates menu item in the Luna menu, or the next time you launch Luna after the update has been posted, you will get a software update dialogue and it'll take you through, you know, the list of, of messaged fixes and improvements. And uh, you'll see the, the items that we thought mentionable there. Nice. And then you can install the update directly from in the app. And you can always also go to uaudio.com, log into your account there and download the latest version of the Luna software there. Hell yeah. Oh man, that's, that's good news. Uh, I'm sure yeah, a lot of people are going to be really excited to have those out uh, and available with the, some of those most requested fixes. Uh, but it's also, man, it's so cool to see, you know, after being UA is just, we've always been like a quarterly, here's a new UAD and you've got to download the whole big installer. Just the fact that with Luna, we're able to do these over the air updates. Uh, it's yeah, it's really cool to see. Yeah. It's really exciting to, to be a part of releasing something like, like Luna, uh, and in the space, there's, there's not a lot of like really frequent, really responsive updates, meaning, you know, it's hard to find a program uh, of the complexity of like a recording system or a, an audio workstation that you can, you know, get frequent updates on. And we're, we're really trying to start off on that foot of being able to be really responsive, uh, really stable and continuously able to update. So uh, it's certainly a goal of ours and uh, so far so good. And we're going to continue to try to deliver stuff on a, on a, as, as regular basis as we can um, to be responsive. Of course, at some point we're going to hunker back down and keep, working on new features that uh, the people are requesting fast and furious in the feedback button. So if you want to see something in Luna that you don't see yet, make sure to hit the feedback button, tell us in the chat, you know, send smoke signals, whatever, we're, we're <laughs> open. Um, it all works. Gonna, it all gets yeah. back to us somehow. <laughs> nice. Well, really cool, man. Uh, great. Any, any picks? All right, cool. So yeah, if you guys have questions uh, popping in, just uh, pop in the chat. We'll try to get to those. Uh, were there any ones that we didn't get to yesterday, guys, that uh, we wanted to bring up first? Uh, there's one in the chat now. So, uh, Bobby's asking about uh, moving fades, holding command, and they're moving around on them. That's not that's not something I'm familiar with. I don't know whether 
um, if anyone else has heard of that, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe what he's talking about is that when he's mo trying to move a fade, if he's in, if he's in grid mode, that it's kind of snapping to the grid, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds it's hard to understand exactly what's going on based on the reading of the question, but um, you can grab and move a fade around uh, with the grabber or or by trimming the clip. Um, and if you hold command while you're doing either of those things, you will turn on and off snap. So if snap is on, you'll turn it off and vice versa. Right. Right. Nice. Yeah. Well, and Connor, so I, I think I saw someone else mention this one earlier too. Of uh, they were kind of wondering. It seems to be like there are you know the command control, especially when you're editing MIDI. Does one of them, you know, somebody showed us this great trick of being able to change the velocity of a track, right? Or sorry, of a note by pressing command and then clicking on the note. See how that one got uh, is getting bigger you know it's getting brighter and brighter the more or less that I, I pull the velocity up and down um but if you want to slide it around you have to click on the note and then hit command is that correct yep, yep that's right yeah so it's a, just an order of operations thing there there's a lot of editing capability built into what you can do with just it's like no tools but adding modifiers mm -hmm. mode of editing midi right inside of the timeline so if you don't prefer to have snap on uh, as a default, then you can go up to the bar beats ruler and click on the snap button mm -hmm. or press the shift backslash key uh, command, which turns on and off the snap setting. So if you have a preferred um, way of editing MIDI uh, and want the opposite to be snap mode, then just turn snap off in your new session and you'll be good to go. Nice. Yeah. And the, so, yeah, for anyone that's wondering, so shortcuts up here, the good ones to know, it's uh, they're shift based shortcuts. So shift uh, minus or plus. And that is changing my grid size, as you can see there. But then shift backslash, right, you know, just down and over to the right from there. That's how you can turn on and off snap. And the the using the command key toggles it both ways, right? So now that snap is turned off, this note is just freely movable. But if I hold command after pressing that note, it's now snapping to the grid. Uh, totally. So yeah, it's kind of cool that you're able to get toggle in and out of the, those workflows at any time. Very cool, very cool. All right, so that answer. Oh, hey, hey Ben, I was gonna say this. That reminded me of one today. I've seen a couple people looking for the scissors tool, right? Like you oh, know, yeah. you know, needing that. Maybe that would be something to show mm -hmm. how we're dealing with that. Oh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I know all of the ways to splice things, and you guys can correct me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let me go back into Snap because I like to stay on the grid. So the one I use all the time is place my cursor somewhere on a region and hit the B key. You can also hit Command E. Um, and I think, are the, is there another one? Or is it just two? There's a, there's a menu item, but yeah. Ooh. Key Command Wiser is two. Yep. And then separate e selection right here. And then that works for at your insertion point, but also for selections, right? So mm -hmm. you're doing it just at the insertion point, but it also will work. Yep, you can do it. You can select an area of a, of a clip and hit the, again, either uh, Command E or just the B key will also do it. The yeah, other way, couple of guess what? There's a third way. Yes, I knew there was. <laughs> I knew there was a third one. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you have an insertion place, meaning not a selection, mm -hmm. and then you just, uh, so yeah, right there, you don't have it separated, press delete. What? Okay. Okay. So if you had something selected, obviously delete would take it away. But yeah. if you just make a point, what's the logic there, Connor? What is, what's the story behind that? You know, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of reasons why you could have multiple key commands. Some of it just has to do with muscle memory. Some of it has to do with just the actual implementation of certain commands. And this one is a sort of more tweaky reason that that is like by virtue of the way the clear command is implemented. Uh, under the hood, it just happens to also make a separation when there's no range selection. So this nice. one is not so much of a deliberate thing as it is like a consequence of clean, good computer science. Ah, cool. <laughs> nice. Well, well done, well done, guys. All right, so there's yeah. three different ways to the uh, razor blade or uh, cut or you know trim up clips, however you please. Nice, killer. Um, any other good questions coming through there on the chat? I see some easy ones are getting answered in the chat. Uh, always appreciate having you guys hit hitting up the chat as well. Uh, what about chopping a MIDI note like you do in Logic? Um, I'm not super familiar with how Logic chops MIDI notes. 
Connor Love, are you guys familiar with, with what that workflow is? You know, I think the major separate, um, where's my window? So if I dare not launch another piece of software uh, at the moment, <laughs> but the major separate thing I think that logic users might be used to is separate at playhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have the same thing because they're usually linked together. So you can use the B key yeah. um, or command E um, to separate notes under the insertion point. Um, and that that's that's the way to, to work it there. I don't know about live um, quite yeah. as intuitively. So here, I was doing it in a kind of a small way, but so here, here's one long note, and then I can come halfway through it. My, my playback is here, and then the same commands that we were just using before, I hit the B key, and now that note has been separated, chopped into two. Um, and Command E, so Command E, since I had a separation, it now separated the clip, but let's see if I just put my playhead there. Command E does the same thing, I'm just separating that note. Um, so that, uh, I'm not sure if that's the way Logic does it, but that is a quick and easy way to split up a note. Um, and something I do, I do notice that Luna does is say I delete here. It's automatically, it's taking this one note. I've deleted that eighth note of it. It kept the top and then it added in a note marker here for, uh, so it would, it would play that note again rather than just, you know, deleting the whole note. Um, so that's another little MIDI editing feature that you guys are going, probably going to want to know about. Yeah. The distinction there just to, if, if people missed it is that that bottom, uh, darker darker red section is what we call the footer mm -hmm. and if you put your cursor in there we sort of take you out of the the note editing and kind of go back to the clip level so you can make a selection yep so what's nice is you don't need to leave clips view sorry notes view in order to edit clips which is really so, nice very convenient so yeah, yeah very convenient and also like you said there's different conventions based on sort of where you're focused then right if you're focused sort of on a making selection you're editing the clip whereas if you're kind of going over in the notes area and like you said, you separate, you're separating the notes, not the clip. So there's some nice conveniences there for you. Nice. And what, uh, just to remind people, what's the shortcut for rotating through the different views? Control, command, left, right arrow. Control, command, left, right. So you can see now over right underneath my track name, I'm going between you know clips, notes, volume, mute, pant. So I'm going through all the different automation and views uh, that are available here in this list. There's also a nice um, single key toggle between clips and notes view, which is the minus key mm -hmm. um, on the main uh, query keyboard. Yep. So you'll just be able to go quickly between your clip and your notes view, which can be nice if you just want like a big a big block to sort of move around for arrangement or clip uh, trimming or whatnot. Yep. And then on audio tracks, the same that same keyboard shortcut of using the minus key uh, toggles between clips and volume automation. Totally. Yeah, so both of those are really, really powerful things, and it's one of those things that, like, the more you use, the more you use the software, the you know, the faster you start becoming, and you start noticing, like, oh shit, yeah, I know, you know, you, you start remembering the key commands, and starts to become just like second nature, um, especially for in terms of navigating and being able to, you know, zoom out on a big session, and then you know, zoom back in, make edits, zoom back out. Uh, you start kind of learning these workflow tips and tricks. That's great. Um, Awesome. And any other good questions coming in? Uh, I see one. Somebody's asking about side chaining in today's update. Uh, that will that's not included in today's update. Still, still need you to smash that feedback button. Yeah, and I guess Correct. a couple, yeah. Go a couple of things. I think we've seen we've seen a lot of questions just about some of the most common feature requests, right? So whether it's about um, clock update or uh, some other feature that people are. Um, are asking for. Right now, we're really focused on uh, fixing bugs and making sure that some of these gnarly issues are squashed, but we are planning a bigger uh, feature release in the future, which we're not going to announce exactly right now, um, but uh, just know that we're working on it. And uh, right, like I said, right now, it's really just about like when things clearly uh, that we've shipped don't work, we're really trying to uh, improve that and make sure that people's systems run smoothly. Really great. All right. Well, so we did tease everybody uh, the title of the show on YouTube and everything. Uh, people really want to know how we do live streams. Uh, so if you guys have uh, more questions, keep on typing them in. We'll we'll keep on replying to you guys in the chat. But uh, I'm now going to fully expose how we do live streams. <laughs> So uh, the most obvious part of it is the, uh, I'm trying to walk you guys through this as, as best I can. You know, hit me with feedback or if you guys are getting lost or confused, it, uh, it might get really technical, really nerdy here really fast. But uh, essentially, you know, our, the goal that we had for doing these live streams and the way that we're pulling them off was we wanted to get, uh, we wanted it to be in real time. We, want, we didn't want any like 
doing playbacks or having to like pre-record interviews or do stuff like that. We wanted to have this real-time interaction uh, between all the hosts and our guests and our experts. Um, so the best way to do that was a tool we've all learned to love, which is Zoom. Uh, it's a pretty amazing piece of software. Uh, you know, you can have incredibly, you can have large groups, you can have small groups. Uh, it does a good job of handling video and audio across the internet. Uh, at questionable amounts of quality at some points, depending <laughs> on the bandwidth. Uh, but it does a good job, of, and it's a super easy to use tool. So uh, as you guys have no doubt noticed, uh, if you've been watching these uh, Office Hour streams, Zoom is the main conduit that we're moving all of our video across the internet with, uh, except for mine, because we're running, we've been running all these live streams off of my machine here at home, uh, which is a, a really powerful i7 uh, custom Hackintosh, uh, kind of thrown together thing with crazy graphics, lots of memory, amazing processor, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a beast of a machine, obviously with Thunderbolt, so I can run all the Apollo stuff. Um, so yeah, it helps to have a really powerful machine, step one. <laughs> step two, webcams, Zoom, all this sort of stuff. This is how we're going to handle, this is how we handle all of our videos, so how we're able to bring our remote guests in, uh, and it works fine, it looks fine. Uh, it's it's what we're all expecting uh, to see these days. Uh, if you're if you're doing any sort of remote work or remote collaboration with people, uh, so that's the easy stuff, super easy stuff, right? Uh, the one thing that Zoom does horrendously at is audio, because <laughs> it's optimized for voice. It's optimized. It's trying to get rid of background noise. It's trying. It's doing its best to make uh, you know voice from laptops, iPhones, desktop, like from all sorts of different places. It's doing its absolute best to get that intelligibly to the other people on the call, and they do a marvelous job of doing that. But With then forty people, forty people on the call at once sometimes. You know, exactly. Giant zooms, giant. I, I can only imagine the how much time and effort and, and care they've put into those noise reduction algorithms that and everything that they put in there. Um, but the you know noise reduction doesn't sound good when you try to play full quality stereo audio, uh, which is what what we're doing on a lot of these streams. And obviously, if we're if we were going to have any chance of being able to show off, you know, the power of new summing or tape and you know these kind of subtle audio delicacies if you will there's no chance zoom was going to preserve that um and send it across the internet for us so we hustled like crazy trying to there's a, a bunch of really great solutions out there that um are you know tailor made for sending uh high quality stereo audio across the internet um you know there's like session wire there's a uh, Audio Movers, which is the one that we were using. Uh, there's another really good one, Source. Is it Source Direct? Source Connect. Source, Source Connect. Connect. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're all they're all a lot of them are paid platforms and they're not, they're not necessarily free. Um, but the one that we ended up going with was Audio Movers because um, they do they, it, it does its job really well. It's a very easy to use interface, um, and it does high, it allows you to kind of adjust the quality. And we explored a few different ways about how we send that back out to broadcast. And the way that we ended up doing it is uh, basically I'm running, uh, you know, this being the host machine, everything is getting fed into my machine. I'm then kind of combining everything and sending it out uh, to our live streaming platforms. Um, so the tr let me think about well, the, the audio movers, Ben, just to finish up on audio movers. Remember, they have the adjustable latency, which is another yeah. important component that they have in their platform mm -hmm. on top of the bit rate and yeah. uh yeah so let me share my screen so you guys can see as i talk people through this uh so there's two you know obviously luna this is the heart the apollos and console um you know i am running where i'm so glad we added this feature to console uh i think connor showed this we talked about it last week uh but the isolate feature allows me to keep this channel, this channel you guys are hearing right here, uh, allows me to keep this active in console no matter what I load up inside of Luna. Um, so this way, what you guys are always hearing is uh, this beautiful Loughton, uh, I think it's LS208, going into uh, API Vision, which you guys can see. I mean, we're just gonna geek on my audio settings because I'm super proud of them. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a high pass, just the right amount of gain. As you can see, I've got a little gate expander just to hopefully clear out the birds a little bit. Uh, I don't, I've got the compressor turned on, but as you can see, it, it barely ever, you know, only if I get loud, does it, you know, start lighting up a little bit. Um, and shout out to Drew, you, you I kind of, I was sleeping on the vision channel as a voiceover pre, it's a fantastic one to use. Yeah, that's, a, I, I, that's what I'm going through as well, so. Nice, good, good choice. 
Uh, then I hit the precision de-esser. Uh, this mic, when I was setting this up, sounded a little, uh, you can see exactly how bright it is. Maybe I have an SE voice or it's a bright mic. It's a bright pre and a bright mic. Uh, so having this de-esser in there uh, is saving all of your ears, apparently. And then that's followed up by the distressor. Nice little gentle two to one. Uh, so these are just some good voiceover chain setting ideas. Um, Thing, the thing I really love about using our distressor is the fact that uh, the mix, you have a mix comp. So you can, I can kind of overdo it a little bit over here, but then I can still blend that, blend in um, some of the dry signal, which, you know, it already had the API compressor and it already had the API compression on it. So this is kind of my, uh, you know, uh, the first push against it. And then this one's doing a lot more containment and, and holding my voice in one spot. Uh, but you guys didn't come here to know my voiceover chain settings. That's exactly what I came here for. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> well, then we're done. Uh, but yeah. See ya. See us. Um, no, wait, 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 stay, stay. We got more. This is only the start of the path. So Zoom Zoom allows you to listen to, uh, you know, in theory, I could be sending this microphone. You know, I can just select Universal Audio Thunderbolt as my microphone, and that would go out to, you know, everybody else on my meeting. Uh, as well as anything else that's coming in as an input to my Thunderbolt. Uh, Zoom Zoom is, uh, like I said, brilliant in lots of ways, but the way that it handles audio from a multi-channel interface doesn't seem to be the greatest. It hears absolutely everything, so it would be <laughs> combining my voice with Luna output with like the modular that's just running back there at all times. Like Everything would be coming out all at once. So you can see down here, I've set up, I've got a device that's named Streaming Mic. You're like, what is that device? Where did that come from? What is it? Well, there's an incredibly awesome program called Loopback by Rogue Amoeba. Uh, they're a really great company, and I'm going to reuse this app and another one of theirs uh, a lot. And you can see inside of Loopback, what it is, basically what Loopback allows you to do is it allows you to create virtual audio interfaces inside of your computer. So you can see over here, I've got audio devices. You know, We've got my Apollos all coming in here as a universal audio Thunderbolt. Uh, I've got a couple other audio interfaces and things hooked up, like my webcam and the machine. Uh, but what Loopback allows you to do is it allows you to say, I want to make a new virtual device. You can name it, and you can tell it exactly what you want it to listen to. So I've got my streaming mic listening to channel 19, which is this microphone right here. And then I have that molted to channel one, two. So it's coming out in stereo into Luna or sorry, coming out stereo into zoom. So you guys can hear it. Uh, but this is also going to all feed into OBS, which is the streaming software. The, the final piece of the puzzle that we'll get back to momentarily. Um, yeah. And that malt is super important, Ben, because I, I know I've seen a lot of people online having issues where if you're trying to send your, you know, the UA driver straight to OBS, mm -hmm. you're only getting, you know, the left and the right side. So that's that malt is super duper important right there. Yep, exactly. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, for monitoring purposes, I, I've got a dangerous D box over here that I, I monitor through. So uh, I'm comfortable not hearing my own voice and just trusting my chain that it, it sounds good, but I can always turn this on and I, I can hear myself coming back with a tiny bit of a slapback delay because this is not a uh, latency free process at this point. Um, so that is the streaming mic. That's what's going, that's what's feeding into OBS. That's what's feeding into zoom. I've got a zoom mic, which is literally another loop back that is just to capture the audio coming out of zoom. So you can hear all of our uh, guests coming through. Check, 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 there check, 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 there he check, is. Check, check. But you can't hear that because he muted himself. That's the, it's for the better. <laughs> It works. The system works. <laughs> the system works. Uh, so again, this is there's ways to do this in OBS where you can like pick off audio, um, but as long as we are building virtual devices and using a very powerful piece of software like Loopback, it makes a lot of sense to do it here. And again, I can decide whether or not I need to monitor this. Uh, personally, I just have Zoom automatically going out to my D-Box monitor. And then the real fun part of the puzzle is this one here, the Luna Loop. So these are kind of like the three virtual devices that power this entire stream. Luna Loop is listening to 20, channels 29 and 30 out of my uh, Apollo. And you're wondering, what are, what's on 29 and 30? Why are those two so special? Because in my IO setup, 29 and 30 on the input side, this is very important. So you've got monitor left and right on your output over here. That's what's feeding your speakers, that's what tells any other um, any other workstation, hey, go out these. But 
uh, the really cool thing about the Apollo driver is you can also have that same, what's going, being fed out the monitors can also show up as an input, uh, which allows something, a piece of software like Loopback to see 2930 as an input um, that can then be fed to other places. So is that, hopefully this is all making sense and I haven't lost everybody. Uh, gut check, everybody, everybody that I can hear on this call, is this still, still flowing good? Yeah, I'm with you. Nice. I am totally lost, but keep going. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna let you stay lost in love. That's that's fine. Oh, I, I get so it. So Ben, I'm just I'm just I'm just, you, uh... I'm just trying to like represent the people out there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Why don't you play something in Luna, Ben? We can see it, and then come back to loop back, and you can, we can see that mm -hmm. plays. That make that would be very helpful because I'm yeah. very lost. Yeah. So and it's kind of confusing. You're seeing all these other meters move. Like I mentioned, this is my streaming mic on 19. 17, 18, I believe, is the modular that's just constantly running and making noise behind me. But yeah, 29 <laughs> and 30, this is going to be Luna. So just like, so uh, as you see, I'm sure everybody's kind of wondering, but I see other wires. What are those other wires? Um, I also have this set up with a pass-through device. Um, and we'll, get, we'll touch on why I have a pass-through here in a bit. And this is especially important if you want to be like me and host other people's uh, Luna outputs, having this pass through is super important. Um, and then also you'll notice there's one up here for the convert AD. Uh, I do have an external converter that shows up um, as an interface and I've connected my monitor out of my Apollo into this. So I actually have a redundant setup. Um, I can either be monitoring straight off the driver, which is the preferred way, or if I really wanted to, I could have an extra D to A, A to D, and then send that um, as my Luna, my quote unquote Luna loop. And, and if you're using this whole thing, you don't have to show it because it might, you know, bring everything down, but maybe just direct people to where you would add a new device in this window. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So down here, uh, well, if you wanted to add a, so if you want to make these loops, you're going to use the new virtual device down here uh, to create your, your loop or your device. And then you come up here to sources, and this is where you can find either the output of an application or the different audio drivers that are available. Um, that could be used and same goes for uh, monitors. This are all your available monitoring devices. And as you can see, I've got this one, I do have the monitor turned on so I can be hearing whatever is coming back through the Luna loop um, out through my D-Box monitor control. And, and one thing that we, we've set up on, um, on some of our other devices, for people who don't have a second audio interface, if you are using, say, your Apollo to do your monitoring, there's a cool little trick that you can do here which is set up your cues, monitor, sorry, talk, no. This is the part that I didn't set up on mine, but I set up on everybody else's. Uh, for monitoring the cues, how did, how did we have you guys set yeah, that just, up? Yeah, look in your, look in your oh. IO matrix and find the cues. Under outputs, yeah. Yep, yeah, sorry, I was looking on the input yeah. side. So on the output side, come over here, uh, monitor, here we go. There you go. Q one. And I can go monitor on my, you know, so this is my monitor device, monitor, one left, right. So uh, if you don't have the luxury of having a secondary audio interface or like a D-Box or something like, like what I'm using here, what you can do is you can set up, you can use a queue and use loopback to feed out to that queue. So let me show you guys how I would connect that and delete the default wires. And that's 27, 27 yep. So I can come down here, I can say great left to 27, right to 28 and now anything that comes out my monitors or comes in via this pass through is going to be going out through the headphone output on my uh on my x16 or sorry my x yeah that would be my x16 which is currently configured as my q master um so this is how a lot of the guys uh a lot of the guys here hosting with me this is how they've set up their queues uh but i'm in the very fortunate position of being able to just use a secondary interface to monitor through but I think just to, to, to nail this point, because if you do have an Apollo and you want to do this and you want to have this sort of, like you said, like two interface workflow, you don't need two interfaces. You set up the cues. And then if you want to hear yourself, you just either go to the console or you can do it from Luna uh, with a, a track in arm mode yep. and send it, to, uh, send it to the queue, right? Exactly. So, really anything. You could decide, I want some playback tracks in Luna mm -hmm. to go to the queue and other ones not. You can, you can really configure it just using, like I said, Luna or the console and whatever sent to queue is what 
you're going to hear in your headphones. So exactly. Cool. So, and uh, you probably, you guys have probably seen on a few of these streams, you've seen, uh, seen our talent coming in here and, uh, you know, turn Q1 on and turning off the pre fader. This is really helpful for being able to just quickly monitor what's going on inside your mix. Uh, but there's a there's a cool little shortcut that you can actually do. Um, so right now I've got all my tracks selected. So if I I can change the level to all of these just by rotating it, thanks to selection grouping. But you'll notice one of these is not moving with the others, and that's the main channel. So the main channel and a few things, including like. Uh, Neve summing bypasses, it'll actually isolate itself from there uh, for good reasons. But the cool thing, the little shortcut here is that since everything I have is going out this main fader, I can send that that main fader, I can send, uh, turn them all down, let me take it out of selection grouping, so now I'm just working on the main fader, I can send that to Q1. And now anything that's passing through my main fader will automatically go to Q1, which works great until you go to overdub something. So right now, if I were to overdub the space, and this is part of the reason why we set up this very complicated system is because we want to be able to show and demonstrate to you guys the advanced real-time monitoring powers of Luna. Uh, when you do that, the space track that's now ready to accept signal and record, it is no longer passing through my main fader. It's going straight to the monitor outputs. But by ARM, it can also be going to that Q output, which is now going to my headphones. Um, so this is some really, really kind of deep technical things that are going on here to be able to, to, to cue, but uh, the pain is worth it to give you guys really high quality, good audio, um, and be able to make it easy so that Luna can just operate as it normally operates. And that's a great workflow, Ben, there. Like, even just the idea of having a cue on the master fader. It's a it's an awesome overdub mode. You can just send your mix straight to the cues, and then all you have to do is add whatever's being overdub. You don't have to make a whole new headphone mix just to do an overdub, right? Mm -hmm. You're totally right. And so th this is where the, the cue output window, uh, you need to pay attention to that because, you know, by default and, you know, unless you've kind of come in here and changed it, Q1 will, by default, be listening to the mix. So right now these cue settings actually don't matter because it's just going to hear the full mix. But if I take if I turn that off, it's now an independent cue setting, and you can even see see how these all lit up purple. That's how you know that oh now these cues are actually active. Um, so that was hey a, that, Ben, mm -hmm. what's the mix? What's the mix? The yeah. mix is everything that comes out the monitor left right, I believe, right? That's correct. Yeah, um, which it does include this. Uh, arm enabled track, correct, Lev? Totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, isn't this kind of a shortcut? Like, I can't. So, the only reason why we turn mix off on here is so we can get into the queue separately That's right. from yeah, the external it's, source, right? Exactly. It's all about getting a more me mix or whatever it is that you want to get out of queues in general. Like mm -hmm. you said, if you wanted to do like a, a mirroring to the main, uh, to a separate output other than the main, yep. uh, or, to, or to go to your headphones, that's why you would turn the mix off. Mm -hmm. And like, like you just said, you know, it's a mirror of what comes out of the main output. And we kind of figured that's like the, the most like wanted feature when you're just taking an Apollo out of the box. You want to mm -hmm. plug in your headphones and have it be the same as what's going to the monitors, but you might need to mute your monitors, right? Yep. In a more advanced, you know, cue routing or headphone mix type of setup, you might want to, again, give a, a performer something different than what you're hearing in the control room. Or even if you're in the same room, you might want a separate mix for any number of reasons. Totally. Um, yeah, so I, that's why, you know, being in a small little tracking production room, mixing room here, I typically just leave my cues on this way. And again, uh, having that secondary audio interface has made my setup a, a touch uh, simpler in some senses. But uh, if you're setting this up at home and you're just working off of a twin or an X4 or just any Apollo, um, yeah, it's really important to, to set up your cue system. And you want it to be in a way so that um, what you're feeding to that loop back is is exactly what you want to become you know what's going to the loopback is what's coming out of your speakers but sometimes you're going to want something slightly different in your headphones and that's where you're going to come into cue output take it off of the mix and then you know you can a little quick little cheat is to use the main fader assign it to the cue but then you have to be aware that you now need to also send to the cue for um for any tracks that are now record enabled because they're not passing through this main fader anymore and your queue is no longer listening to your monitor outputs. Hopefully that all makes sense. It's the cues, cues are, <laughs> cues are always the most complicated part of any recording studio or any system. Cue routing, headphones, monitors, multiple things like this. This is always going to be the most confusing part of the process. Uh, so if you guys have made it through this and it's all still making sense, uh, 
and how should you oh i see a good question came in how do you use audio movers inside of luna well it's you can actually just do it um you can you know hit listen to put it on your main fader um, and this would be a wonderful solution uh, especially if you're doing like a mix session if you're not doing any overdubs but the same thing the reason why we didn't set it up this way and we went with a more complicated route is because uh, as soon as i arm enable this bass track it's no longer passing through this main fader so you would you would hear the entire mix just minus this one track uh, so what we needed is we needed a way to be able to um, hear both you know everything that's coming out of this main fader in real time as well as anything that's in arm mode um, or you know our voices etc so that was the only reason why we didn't install it into the session or didn't insert uh, audio movers into the session itself and instead we use this very complicated way of looping back we're about halfway there on the audio setup uh, we use this luna loop back to create a virtual device uh, that is you know taking my full main outputs and then I go to the other super wonderful uh, application by Rogue Amoeba called Audio Hijack. And Audio Hijack is a really, really cool app that allows you, it, it has some similarities, honestly, to Loopback. And I, there may actually be a way to do everything that we're doing in Loopback inside of Hijack. The only difference uh, that I know of is that Loopback is a system level thing. So these devices are, as I showed you guys, showing up in my audio MIDI setup as, uh, as independent devices. Whereas Audio Hijack just kind of takes, you know, can take audio from one place, do things to it, and send it to another place. That's the the, the long and short of what Hijack is doing. Uh, and but it can host plugins. Exactly, yeah. and most importantly, yeah. exactly, it hosts plugins. Uh, so as you can see, I've uh, I've got a little a beautiful star. This I believe I learned this formula in chemistry class back in high school. <laughs> Uh, but let me let me go ahead and turn this hijack on. It's the chemical symbol for boron. <laughs> <laughs> for lunon. <laughs> yeah, for lunon. Uh, so you can see I've set this up uh, a couple times to, to demonstrate to people how this all works. Uh, so I've got a few extra inactive devices on here. But what the way I'm using this is I'm using that Luna loop. So this uh, loop back device that we've created that's always listening to my monitor outputs. So it's always getting the main fader. It's always getting any arm enabled track are all being you know now represented by Luna loop. I can create an input device and it's listening to Luna loop. Don't have to do any fancy settings. And then you can drag and drop audio unit effects into this chain. So that's connected to listen to, which is the uh, the audio movers sending plugin. So this is, if I log in, I can start transmission. I can copy the link and now I can send, I could send this link to my co-hosts or to anybody that, uh, that needs to listen in, um, and have, you know, 320 kilobit AAC full stereo with a, a 0.6 second delay to try and keep things somewhat, somewhat synchronized. So this is, this is what we set up for, you know, fab and for Vance and, uh, Jazzy Jeff, all of our guests, this is what they're setting up on their system is, uh, is basically, they don't use the Luna loop. They use this one, which is, like I said, it's exactly what we set up inside of loopback, which is a, an input device. that's listening to the Thunderbolt and it's listening to my monitor left, right inputs. And those are now, you know, I could easily turn this one off and turn this one on. And now listen to is listening to the output of my lunar rig, just like that. Um, so if, if I had sent this link to anyone, they would now be hearing full stereo, full quality, exactly what I was hearing inside of Luna in real time, more or less, um, you know, with like less than a second of lag, which is considering it's the internet is a pretty fantastic turnaround. Um, so that's the sending portion of this loop. And then of course me being, uh, me being a host, being a person that's receiving audio from fab and jazzy and all of our guests, uh, and even, you know, Tom and Drew and all, anyone that needs to send me audio that we're going to go to broadcast with, um, I have to listen to receiver in the same exact project. So this one is, is waiting for me to paste in a session link and hit connect. And as you can see, that, that is outputting to my Luna loop. And that was, that was the importance of having that pass through available here. So now when, you know, when Drew or Tom or somebody sends me audio from their rig, it shows up here on the pass through device and goes into the same destination as the output from my lunar rig. So to OBS and to zoom to anywhere that I'm sending this audio, it appears no differently 
than if it's coming out of my rig or if it's coming out of some uh, a remote presenter's rig. Um, and again, you saw on Hijack, I've got a, a, a secondary monitor um, here for my D-Box that I can turn on or off if I need to. But since I'm monitoring that Luna loop inside of, uh, inside of Loopback, I don't need to. Um, and the good part is, as you saw when, uh, when I play back in Luna, you'll notice that the signal is flowing here. It's going into the Listen To plugin and it's flowing back out. But then it gets to this Receiver plugin and it actually doesn't pass through this. This is stopping the, uh, the continuance of that because otherwise you would get a really killer feedback loop of this is, this is outputting and it's feeding right back into itself. It's, we actually, in troubleshooting this, we, uh, I did create a couple of feedback loops and hurt my ears very, very slightly. Um, but the cool thing is that this automatically does mute any input, which means as designated by those orange lines, signal, signal, and then it gets to here and there's nothing until somebody remotely sends me some audio and then it gets injected into the Luna loop. Whew. Okay. Uh, we still, everybody's, we're still following along. Still, we're still all, making sense. Asleep, ben. Everybody's sleeping. I know this, this feels, I feel like I'm back, <laughs> I'm back teaching a, a college course here. Uh, this is, uh, how to over, how to, you know, transport audio, audio transportation 301. I believe. No, it's cool because now people are going to be able to, you know, this is going to be up on YouTube and people are going to be able to watch and rewatch this and slow it down and take it into bit, into mm -hmm. the smaller chunks and really digest what you're doing here. So that's great. Exactly. And if, you know, if, I, if I've set this up for any other purpose than, than, you know, being able to do these live streams, I would honestly set up this part. I would get hijack and I would set this up uh, for being able to set, if you want to collaborate with people in real time, you can, you know, do, say you just want to do sessions. You just want to do vocal overdubs or an a, a attended mixing session while we're all locked away. This is a great tool to have in your toolkit so that you can be on a Zoom call with your client or with uh, with your um, collaborators. You can have them loaded up on Zoom over here or on your desktop, you know, whatever floats your boat. But then you can set up Hijack to be automatically sending anything that's coming out of Luna. And I mean, you know, let's be real, anything that's coming out of your Apollo to the internet. So you can, you can use the same trick that we're showing here with Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, anything that's using an Apollo um, as your interface, you can do this trick. And then everything that's coming out your speakers is now uh, able to go to a collaborator thanks to the Audio Movers uh, plugin that's instantiated here. Uh, so this is, uh, this is kind of the, the the real cool thing that we that we've been doing and has allowed us to bring in high fidelity audio from people all across the world. And Ben, to be clear, this is not pro from a latency standpoint. This is not really set up for live performances and live overdubbing from rig to rig, right? Exactly. Yeah, you wouldn't want to yeah. you wouldn't want to try to like all play on the same beat together. But right. yeah, but you know, just like what we did with Sam uh, yesterday morning. You know, we, we set it up on Sam's system. He was he had this portion of it. He had his uh, monitor outputs connected to audio movers, and then I was listening and and then sending that out to the broadcast. Um, so you know, you can use it. You still get a fairly real time performance out of it, and especially yeah. if, if audio fidelity matters to your live stream uh, and getting high fidelity audio from somewhere else matters. This is, as far as I can tell, the best way to to get that stuff happening. You just you know you got to accept that things aren't going to be perfectly in sync. And you, you, I'm sure you guys have seen this in our broadcast as well. Like you may hear like a little bit of the guitar coming through the microphone, but then also coming out through the audio movers and they could be a little off sometimes. Um, so that's where you would want to come in and adjust, have them adjust the latency as much as their bandwidth would handle to, to get those lined up. Um, but also you may need to, you know, be like me and just kind of casually over here muting and unmuting, uh, unmuting your hosts or, or the, uh, the remote presenters. Uh, so that people are able to hear the best quality audio possible. Um, so yeah, so that's that's loopback, that's hijack, that's cue monitoring, and then uh, the final part. This is the the audio or sorry the video nerding part of it. Uh, we use OBS, uh, which is an incredible open source uh, open broadcasting software, and so th all of these things end up coming in uh, as multiple devices. So uh, you know. What you guys see on stream is exactly what I see on my computer monitor. That's happening with this display capture device. And then, and then I stacked up a bunch of audio devices. So we've got loopback, which is the Luna loop. Um, so this is where we hear uh, what's coming out of my Luna rig or any remote presenters Luna rig. We've got streaming mic, which is this amazing microphone. We've got zoom audio, which you can hear. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. That's where you hear all the birds <laughs> from afar know. coming in. 
Uh, and then we've got a couple, you know, I've got a couple like the Luna crawler, which you guys have probably seen on air a couple of times. That's a video, a little pop-up that comes in. We've got a little UA live bug that pops up. Um, and I've, I've set up a couple other, been, we've been testing some other stuff to show you guys. I'm sure you've seen over my shoulder, other cameras appearing and disappearing. Um, so this, this all handles that. And something else I th I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed on our streams is that, uh, uh, I've, I figured this out when we were doing pure mix live streams all the time. We typically we're audio nerds. We want to hear the music. We want to hear the audio, even if that means, uh, not hearing as much of the voice. Um, and sometimes, you know, especially people don't have headphones on, you can have, uh, you, know, you can have stuff coming out of the speakers and back into the mic and it all sounds phasey and weird and not great. So one of the things that we've gone in and set up on these is, uh, filters uh, there's a, on both the streaming mic and the zoom audio mic, they're both listen, they're both doing a side chain ducking inside of OBS. So they're listening to that Luna loop back. So as soon as I play back music, you should not be able to hear it. You guys should have barely been able to hear me say that because I was, uh, ducked down about, uh, 10, 20 DB. Um, and so I always, this is my personal preference. I know some people say that they would like it to be the other way. I've even seen comments. People being like, hey, I can't hear what you guys are saying while the music's going. Uh, you shouldn't be talking while the music's going because it's that's that's the focus there. Uh, so we do have this set up to do that way. But if you really prefer the other way, you could you could do the exact opposite and go to the loop back inside OBS and tell it to sidechain duck based on uh, what you're saying on the vocal mic. Um, and then, yeah, we just have, as you guys know, there's the opening countdown scene. It just plays back a video of silence. There's a Luna trailer that I start and end the show with. And these are all just set up as scenes inside of OBS. And there's a just camera, which is the little in dumb intro that I've done on all of these, where I talk to you guys for five seconds and then quickly get to the everybody else. And then there's that final hold screen. And I've set up a couple of scenes for the after hours mix sessions. Uh, that are, again, just various OBS combinations of... Uh, graphics and camera placements and stuff like that um but yeah that's i think in a nutshell uh, sorry i was completely ignoring all these questions uh did was there anything that people didn't mi that they missed or want me to go over again or anything that wasn't super clear because as far as i know that's basically the entire setup you guys can all now steal this exact formula you can start your own universal audio youtube channel <laughs> and start competing with us i don't <laughs> I do care. Please don't do that. But it'd be kind of funny if you did. If we saw if you it, did, just just send Ben an email saying thank you. Yeah, it may be a check. I don't know. You know, it's it's up to you. I owe you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Donations. Yeah. Uh, Get some Venmo going. Exactly. Uh, Martin's in the chat. Look out. Uh oh. Uh oh. <clears throat> Martin's in the chat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, and obviously, the the fun thing has been uh, inside of UA. Everyone's uh, as soon as we started doing the office hours. Uh, me and all the guys with our broadcast microphones and our advanced our console set we've we've now set a trend inside of ua i'd say just you know even in our department alone like almost half the people on zoom calls now have set up sm7s or 58s <laughs> inside console and hooked it up into zoom so they can uh sound good on on our morning calls as well well no joke i just came out of a meeting to come here i'm gonna leave in five minutes to go to the next one and yeah, we get a lot of comments like, oh man, your mic sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so if, if you only take away one thing for the, for this video, and that's how to set up uh, how to set up from console, set up a nice microphone so you sound better than everybody else on your Zoom calls, uh, just watch the first part of this of this video where we're setting up, <laughs> setting up that vo console vocal chain uh, and then loop back to be able to create a, a very specific device that gets you in mono for, for Zoom calls. Those are, that's kind of the, the big power, piece of that puzzle. That's a power move. Yeah, that's a power move. It really is. <laughs> uh, and our photographer at UA, he's, uh, he has his camera. He's got the Sony A7S hooked up with a cam link. So now he shows up to, to our meetings, and he's just all dark. He's like moody with incredible depth of field. And we're just like, dude, are, are you painting? That's are cheating. you yeah. <laughs> it's totally, totally cheating. It looks, it looks absolutely beautiful. I, I'm very, in, incredibly jealous. But... Uh, you know, he was jealous of my audio setup too. So, you know, there you, go. you, gotta, you gotta take your wins where you can get them. <laughs> there was a, there was a question in the, in the YouTube chat about, um, like he's not getting the audio and, you know, can you talk a little bit about maybe troubleshooting or mm -hmm. lack of audio and loopback? I think we ran into a couple of little troubleshooting. Oh yeah. That, good. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up. So yeah. So the caveat, the, the things to watch out for number one thing to pay attention to 
in my experience of using these these things is in audio MIDI setup, make sure that everything is on the same sample rate. <laughs> so uh, most of these devices will set this stuff automatically for you, but uh, don't worry about the webcam, but especially your virtual devices and then anything that your virtual devices are referencing, <laughs> just park it at a sample rate and don't move it. Because uh, if you do if you do move that sample rate around, uh, that's I was having dropouts and weird things happening. Um, there's also, so loopback loads at the very beginning, it's, it's at a kernel level, you know, to be able to show up or it might not be a kernel level. Don't quote me on that, but it is a very low level thing for these to show up as audio drivers in here. Uh, every once in a while I'll see meters moving in here. Like the, like the driver is working, like everything's happening like, like it's supposed to be like all of these will be going, but it actually, it, uh, it doesn't make it to the output. Uh, so that OBS or, or the other platforms can see it. Uh, so a lot of times in the morning, I actually do a, I do two cycles of booting. One yeah. to kind of wake up all the drivers and load them up once and then do a quick restart, not a full. You don't want to do a power down and a power up. There's something about, uh, and again, I'm also working on a Hackintosh, so there's weird things. The that's, built the, in. that's your problem right there. The, the well, number no, one problem is probably my Hackintosh yeah. and Thunderbolt the drivers are always weird. But uh, doing that, basically, this is a long way of saying if you're running into troubles, if you're not getting audio, try a restart. Um, yeah. 90% of the time, sometimes you'll see like Drew or Tom or some of these guys drop off of the stream. They're typically restarting the machine because they lost <laughs> yeah. audio. Yeah, it does. It's not. I don't. It doesn't matter about the Hackintosh. Maybe. Maybe you have different issues. But. But yeah, you're right. This, this <laughs> stuff is. This stuff is so low level that it's. Uh, it definitely reboots help a lot. And sometimes a couple. You know, a couple times. It's. Surprising. I think that's that was the main thing I wanted to get across the sample rate thing and just when we found that there's no meters and loopback. Sometimes just quitting everything that's open, kind of starting you know with loopback and audio hijack and then the apps on top that seems to work for me pretty reliably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, you know, speaking of which, this is super nerdy, but like generally I don't like to shut down my machine with apps open so that when it reboots, it tries to relaunch those apps. I always quit everything all the way down and then sh shut down. I yeah. found that to be well, a better way to do cleaner starts. Yep. And also when you do the restart, um, you can, there's this little checkbox, reopen windows when logging back in. This seems to launch back and it doesn't try to restart chrome or loopback or all these other programs don't um, hit that restart button right now ben that would be uh, <laughs> be, uh, dude, i'm 100 I'm gonna end the stream one of these days by just restarting my machine just click just, yeah. just pull it pull the connor um, yeah, exactly i'm out <laughs> uh yeah that's a little inside joke but it's the yeah. end of the it's near the end of the hour so there everyone that's on here you guys are all on on uh inside jokes along with us um, so yeah, if you're not getting meters in OBS, try a restart. Um, yeah, if you run into any issues, try a restart. I was definitely pulling my hair out for uh, an entire Sunday, being like, "This is all working. Loopback is lighting up. Why am I not getting anything to OBS?" As soon as I, you know, as soon as I left for the day, came back the next day, started up my machine, it all magically worked. I was like, "Oh yeah, troubleshoot 101. Uh, restart your machine." <laughs> yep. I've also found with OBS. I don't know if you found the same Ben that. Um removing devices while OBS is open. Like if you're removing a camera oh, or yeah. an audio device can crash OBS. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it, even so a US, even like a USB thumb drive, like yeah. any, any, any IO changes or any hot swapping or hot plugging of anything, uh, just uh, don't do it with OBS. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the same time. yeah, the cool thing about OBS is that it'll remember your settings when it restarts. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. The downside of OBS is that it's only got one configuration. So that's where getting into creating the scenes on the far bottom left there is Mm -hmm. kind of critical if you want to set up for multiple live streams with different guests or different scenarios so yep exactly and this is this is the thing that allows me to you know like i said for when we go to solo mix you know adds a adds a camera of me on and i guess you guys are seeing this on the stream right now this is very you're getting the the inside baseball here but uh, uh and also lev you'll 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 appreciate this they do you can actually load up uh different scene collections Oh, um, I haven't found that yet. That's mm -hmm. cool. And you, you can export them as well. So I could share, and I, I will be sharing all of these with uh, with the other hosts here on our office hours. Uh, awesome. So you can import, export scene collections, which would give you all the most of the, all the settings and uh, and everything that's contained inside the scenes. But then they also have profiles, uh, and this actually we've been testing around with uh, getting a better Instagram uh, live streaming solution. Uh, so what I did is instead of messing up the one I know that works, it's very, it's highly important that we're able to pull off all these office hours. Uh, I created new profiles to be testing out new things inside of, uh, both for, uh, scenes and also for profiles, which controls your output settings, uh, inside that's, of OBS. 
That's a user error on my part. I was looking for that kind of thing under the file menu. It's the obvious place that you would think of a show, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, cool. just, just like Luna, OBS has uh, there's no saving. It's just always saved and and you know pulls back up with your with your last known settings, which is really great. Um, so yeah, that's guys. That's how you that's how you stream like UA does. Uh, if you do, if you guys run into issues with this, uh, you know, I'd say show up. Oh, come to the after hours. Try it. I'll be here. I'll be back here in two hours doing an actual mix. Uh, so I wouldn't it be fully bothered if we got a few. If I had to answer a few more questions about this, but I would more so recommend just uh, rewinding this video, watching it twice, taking notes. Uh, I saw somebody was asking for a flow chart. Um, yeah, that would be wonderful if somebody if somebody makes a flow chart, uh, we will share it with us and we will reshare that back out to the world. Because uh, I got I got I got a mix to do. I got, I don't got time to be making flow charts for this stuff, guys. <laughs> I wish I could. Well, you know what's uh, you know what's really cool, Ben, is that uh, you can do your mix on one point zero point two because it came out uh, <gasps> while we... this was happening. No so, shipping. Uh, you're you're all able to get 1.0.2 now in the in the downloads page at uaudio.com as well as directly in the app if you click check for updates in the Luna menu. Oh, yeah. Or next time you launch, you'll get 1.0.2. 1.0.2. What's that version number again? Oh, okay. You know, it's the second <laughs> numeral at the third decimal place of version one. <laughs> Bravo. Awesome. Well, great, uh, guys. I I hope this was uh hope this was fun and interesting for you guys. It was a, a really big nerdy deep dive into uh into how we set up the spaghetti and toothpicks to make these office hours. But as you see, the result is uh, I can tell you from my point of view as the person hosting these and kind of running the majority of the system. Once it's all set up and running, uh, it actually it works. I'm able to just turn the rig on in the morning. Uh, I send these guys a Zoom a password protected Zoom invite. Uh, which is also an important pro tip there. If you're using Zoom to do this stuff, Zoom all publishes, you can see that number for your call all over the place on these streams. Uh, password protect your thing so you don't get Zoom bombed by some randos. Um, oh, sorry, I did I did forget one piece of equipment that I, I really am enjoying. That's this little, the stream deck. Lev's got one too, yep. Uh, so this is sitting over to my right and this allows me to quickly, you know, turn on the little thing from the bottom. Allows me to turn on the little bug over here, uh, but then I can also just you know go back and forth between scenes just with the press of a button, which is super dope. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're at all thinking about streaming and doing setups like this, uh, oh, Stream Deck's super cool. And I've also this is a little inside baseball right here. Notice one of them. Sorry, everything's backwards. This is hard. Uh, one of them. There's a little Luna logo. I've been playing with setting up Luna shortcuts inside my stream deck as well. Uh, so you can see I've put all the transports, pre-roll, playlist, metronome, all the, you know, you can, you can set this up with just key commands. So if you guys are looking for like a tactile way to execute keyboard shortcuts inside of Luna, this is, this is the way. They've even got like an iPhone companion app, which I think you have to subscribe to. Um, mm -hmm. It's like two bucks a but, month, I think. Yeah, it's, it's inexpensive. Um, I love the hardware, just having that tactile button and not having to go on my phone to do it. But mm -hmm. that's another option if you're looking for uh, something that you've already got lying around. If you've got your smartphone, that's another option too. Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, man, this has been been a fun walk down my uh, inside the pipes of uh, UA live streams. Hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough. And again, if you have questions, watch the video again, then show up at, ha at the after hours. Maybe I'll get to a question or two about this. But uh, you know, we're going to be doing much more fun things than talking about live streaming in that one. We're going to actually be like, you know, mixing a song, doing like music things. What? I know, right? Okay. I thought this was the I thought this was the Rogue Amoeba after hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and major shout out to Rogue Amoeba. Thank you for making incredible software that uh, allows us to do very complicated things all inside of one box. I liked my ambiguous comment better. Okay, you fine. Couldn't tell, you couldn't tell if I was like like knocking them or, or loving on them. And it, it is the latter, but anyway, continue. <laughs> I know. I just gotta be. I gotta be. I gotta be the uh, the one that puts the nail on the pin in the nail nail in the. Well, uh -oh. tail in the, the metaphors are out of control. <laughs> okay, ben, ben has lost it. Please hit the feedback button, Ben, and go download <laughs> go download one dot zero dot two. That's right. All right, great guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us for the soft hours. I'll catch you guys all later. Bye. Goodbye.